Welcome to my ultimate guide to ancient evil. Consider this video as your central hub for absolutely everything you need to know on this map. From the moment you spawn in to crafting all the buildables, retaining the wonder weapons, upgrading them once and then twice, a full map walkthrough, a breakdown of the challenge system so you can utilize it the best, a perfect early game setup for high round runs and easter egg runs, and topped off with some pro tips for some of the easter egg steps to make it as easy as possible, especially on solo. If you're looking for ultimate guides on the other other Black Ops 4 Zombies maps you can find them in the description but if you're looking for an ancient evil easter egg tutorial then that will be linked down below or on your screen as an interactive eye. I seriously hope you enjoy and find this guide useful, all my other ultimate guides have gone down extremely well so if you find this useful in any way shape or form a thumbs up would be amazing and hearing how it helped you in the comments would be amazing. Subscribe for more zombie videos and let's jump straight into the game. Here it is my ultimate guide to ancient evil, we're playing the map live right here on round one, you have all the zombies spawning in, so we're just going to go ahead and get rid of them straight off the bat. But we're going to split this guide into two live gameplays. This one is going to be one where you can get an insane amount of points early game, set yourself up with a ton of points to open up the map, as well as uh, get the Eternal Flame Blue, which you're going to need if you want to attempt the Easter Egg and a bunch of other things. So this is going to be extremely useful for you guys, and I really hope you enjoy this strategy. So this is the Temple of Apollo spawn room. We have the Essex Model 07 there, which we're going to add absolutely avoid by all costs and then down here we have the strife if you want to buy ammo if the strife is your starting pistol if you start off with the mog 12 which is starting weapon then you can just go ahead and buy the strife to get that stiletto knife and have the one hit melee for a really really high round what we're going to be working on is going ahead and getting about between four to five thousand points before we open up to the sentinel artifact which is the power switch essentially of the map and uh, we're going to be doing some techniques which is going to really make your games super, super efficient. So I'll be back when we get to about 4,000, 5,000 points. Okay, so round three, I've got just about 5,000 points. So we're going to open up one of the ways to the Sentinel Artifact. Either side will get you there, but we're going to show you this side here. So we're opening up to Temple Terrace. Down here, we have the Mog 12 War Buy, which is really, really cool. We're going to go ahead and open this, which is going to lead us to Upper Road. And we're going to follow along swordfish on the wall right there but we're going to have one more debris and remember the doors will cost more if you're playing in co-op we have a kn44 inside of here as well as the uh bowie knife the amphitheater but here is the sentinel artifact we pick it up and it's going to spawn a bunch of skeleton zombies thanks to this guy and i don't advise meleeing them because they do take like two knives and it can be a little bit fishy Trying to get them one knife kills sometimes if they've got the armor on so just shoot them if you want to be safe but we're going to be killing these skeletons until zombies start spawning in from the stands and here we go zombies start spawning in from the stands now you only get about 10 points from these guys so definitely wouldn't advise using your gun to kill them especially but it'll get to a point where there's going to be so many spawning in like super super quick this is where you want to activate your specialist weapon because you can already start working on getting your Specialist weapon leveled up by just killing all the zombies that are here. Come on, Shakrams, do your work. Shakram's definitely the best specialist in this map I've found anyway to use. You can still throw it around even when Pegasus is spawning in. And there you go. We almost have level two straight off the bat from round three. Absolutely insane work there. Pegasus flies away. It's going to give us a max ammo. And then we can start working on getting the next part of the map complete, which you want to do is by completing challenges because it's going to get us so many points and just set us up super early for a really interesting early solo high round run or Easter egg run. So to start your challenges, you come up to the Oracle and the spawn room, spend 500 points on the tribute. And as you can see, our RNG is not great here as we need. Oh, there we go. Kill zombies with special weapons. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to group up all the zombies together. And what we want to do is try and complete these challenges so that we earn one legendary reward and then one epic reward. If we do that, we will get the eternal flame super, super quick. Now, if your special weapon, if you bring it out, it's going to knock the zombies back. And that counts as kills from your special weapon. Now, what we want to do is do this early round, because as you can see, it bases it also on the round you're on. So because it's so low a round, we already went from common to rare to soon legendary very, very quickly. Let's get another challenge. Take damage and recover health. Easy. So the reason why we're doing these all super early is because the challenges will base itself around what part of the map is open. Now, since you only had like a few doors open, 
it shouldn't give us any challenges that involve like killing zombies in uh, another side of the map because we don't even have it open. It won't tell us to get kills with the Apollo's wheel shield because we've not built it yet. We've not opened anywhere that has the parts for it besides one. So it's not going to give us it. So it should help us get this stuff done early and we can get ourselves a pack-a-punch weapon very early on in a round. So there we go, legendary reward. As soon as you see that pop up on your screen, go ahead and redeem it and we should be given a pack-a-punched weapon, which for round five is extremely good. And RNG, hello, we did not get one. But as you see a clip on screen, this is in the previous game where I got given a really, really nice RNG, which was a Galil. So you should get a pack-a-punch gun and that is how you get a pack-a-punch gun super early in the game. But unfortunately, we didn't get it. So that's great. So now what we need to do is keep buying challenges so we can get ourselves a epic reward. So as you see for this challenge, it's kill zombies in the amphitheater. And this is probably one of the only locations it will give us besides maybe up a road because, yeah, we simply don't have anywhere else. I'm also going to use these spawns as a good time to unleash my specialist and try and charge it up because we're so close to level two now. Boom. Level 2 on round 6 is what I'm talking about. Okay, this next challenge, we can still use our stiletto knife on round 7. It's still really good. It's going to be a 2 knife kill, so any insta kills are going to be less. As you can see, we've got none of the map open besides what we have, so the game doesn't know what challenges to give us, so it's recycling through them. As you can see, we're already back to legendary on round 7. Hopefully, if we deal enough melee damage, which I'm sure we will do, We'll be able to get epic this round and there it is epic reward there it is boys i'm just going to throw down my ray fires i'm going to go ahead and claim it and we got a free self revive from that but as you see the light or well, the eternal flame is now blue which means we can go ahead and do any easter egg steps which require it which it does and also getting the double gauntlet upgrades requires it so look at all the points we've got we've got so many points 16k got tons of stuff and we can basically go ahead and do almost everything on the map now so let's go ahead and open up the rest of the map that i haven't opened yet so we'll open this for 750 which is offering of the atelids we've got the mx9 we've got a mystery box and we have the danu perk which is dying wish which i'm going to pick up also bought the mog just for some security purposes as we come down here through sacred way we have the uh, maddox and then we have the stoa of the athenians where we're looking for the golden bridle which we're going to need to ride the pack a punch so we've got one location there but since it's not there we're going to open this location through the intersection of treasuries we've got the mozu up there for 1300 as you make your way along we have ourselves the golden bridle right there and just before we pick it up we also have the raw perk machine. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this bad boy up. And it's going to spawn in one of these six armed dudes. So what I'm going to do is activate my Shakrams and uh, just melee him to death and hope for the best. And as you can see, there it is. He is absolutely wrecked by that. Very, very easy. We're now going to go ahead and show you guys how to build the shield. And the reason why we're going to show you that is because he drops the first part. So as you can see, the part is just there, so we'll pick that up. Next part we're looking for is a spear, which we can find on that wall there. Since it's not there, we'll go and look right here in Intersection of Treasuries, which it is there. But if not, then what we do is go right back to Stoa of the Athenians, check behind here, and we will find the spear there. Our final part is going to be in Upper Road, which we open earlier, but we'll go ahead and open the other side so we basically have most of the map open. Gymnasium Bathhouse has a victorious tortoise perk there for Ra, whatever Ra perk you've got set there. You do have the trebuchet on the wall there. We have a trap which uh, is a sort of, so it just warms up, it's crazy. For a thousand, here is a buildable bench for the shield. Here is the Sorg 9mm. And then there's the opposite doors to spawn. And this door leads you up to the Hemera Shrine and the opposite side of the amphitheater. So we're going to be looking for the final shield part right here on Upper Road, which can spawn in these three spots. It can be up on this section right there, which it's not. It can be under the bridge on this rock, which it's not. So it's going to be up on this section right here. Grab the part and then we'll go and build this 
at the marketplace. Build it just like that, and there we go. Apollo's Will Shield, absolutely amazing. Works just like a normal shield. You can bring it out with your left button, and it has spears. It has 15 of them in total, and you're going to be using that and the Eternal Flame to do parts of the Easter Egg and also the Gauntlet double upgrade. So, final little look, we have the Organ 9mm, Organ DMR, what am I even talking about? We'll buy this debris for a 1,000, which leads us into this section called Spartan Monument where we have the Gaia Shrine, we have the ICR on the wall, we have the Zeus perk, which is Quick Revive, which I'm going to purchase because I really love it. And here we can hold to ride Pegasus. As soon as you pick up the Golden Bridle, you'll be able to pick it up and ride Pegasus, which is going to take us to a brand new location, which is awesome. But now we're going to jump into game two to go ahead and show you how to play the rest of the map. But you should have a ton of points at this point to be able to open up pretty much all of this new section of the map if you didn't buy any of the perks like I did. But if not, you can just play for a few rounds and you can start opening stuff up. Once that cutscene's over, you'll be brought here to the other section of the map and we can work on getting two things, the Pack-a-Punch and the Pegasus Strike. So the first part we're going to be looking for is this part, which can be found here, which we're going to pick up. If it's not there, then make your way back behind here and on this brick, it should be there. And if not, then it should have spawned on top of this little flaming torch here. A second part is going to be a hammer which can be found by opening to python pass and it's either going to be here which it is which is lovely thank you it can either be against this wall right here and if not then make your way down and it's going to be right here against this wall and coming back up to the river of sorrow we have the odin perk machine here and a debris which will take you to cliff ruins where you can find the last and final piece which can either be behind this pillar which it's not it can be on top of this where it is so we'll pick it up there and then it can also be down this cliff right there on that stone wall. So we're going to go ahead and do, so I'm going to kill off these zombies real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and craft the Pegasus Strike. Now, since we got near to one of the cages for the Pack-a-Punch, we're getting attacked by a load of skeletons. So let's go ahead and work on the Pack-a-Punch. So once you're in this area, you need to have your special weapon meter fully charged up, unleash it, and then simply use the melee mechanic to smash this bird cage. I'm going to be doing that with another cage on the opposite side of this area. Okay, now we have our special meter. What you want to do is come to this area in Python Pass, shoot down this cage with a few bullets of a weapon, and then activate your special and melee it, and it's going to reveal the eagle's cage. Now we do have one of these boss zombies in again, so I'm going to try my best to kill him. Using my Shack Rams. Oh, that's close. That's close. And now that he's taken out, boom, we've got the max ammo. And then if we make our way through this debris into the center of the world, it's going to begin a lockdown step where the two eagles are going to be destroying the crystals here. Now, we did have that Pegasus Strike we built. So if you place that down, it's going to replace your equipment. And as you see here, it spawns Pegasus which just absolutely demolishes any zombie in sight. It's a monkey bomb, it attracts all zombies towards it, it's super strong, and it lasts for a really long time as well. So I can't recommend this Pegasus Strike enough. It's free to build, it's amazing, definitely get it. And with that all done, it has revealed the Pack-A-Punch machine. And there we have it, boys. Pack-A-Punch is open. So we can go ahead and open this debris, which will lead us to the second eagle cage that we destroyed. And now that Pack-A-Punch is open, we now have Fast Travels activated, which you can use either here by Pack-A-Punch or where Pegasus dropped us off. So we're going to go ahead and use the Fast Travel to take us back. And now we're going to work on getting through the four gauntlet hands. Now, if you walk past the Oracle at any moment, she's going to tell you to seek a primordial weapon. She says where the arrow splits the road. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and explain all 20 dormant hand locations right now. And on screen, you're also going to see verbally what she'll mention as the location. So we'll start here in the chaos of treasuries. If she mentions that, you need to melee this crystal in here. She mentions near the purple blossoms, you're going to melee this brick down here. If she mentions the bark of gold, it's going to be this pot, which it is here. So we melee it and it's going to give us a dormant hand. 
If she says a shield bearer's fountain, it's going to be a pot right there you melee if it's general's column it's going to be a pot which you melee which again we have one there she says fallen statesman it's going to be something you're going to melee right there she says beneath the watchful gaze of zeus it's going to be a dirt pile you melee right there and if she mentions golden taurus it's going to be a pot right there and finally where the arrow splits the road it's going to be a meleeable thing right there and there's also a bunch of locations inside of this section of the map. Starting with where Sorrow flows beneath, you're going to be meleeing this here. If she says Sorrow washes over, it's going to be a dirt pile there you've got to melee. If she says Water Wheel, it's going to be a dirt pile right there. If she mentions something about a workbench, it's going to be right here you melee. If she mentions where the serpent snared the eagle, it's going to be a pile you melee right there. If she says Broken Bridge, it's going to be a pot which you melee right here. If she says the Shrine of Wind and Sky, it's going to be right by the shrine around here. If she says Top of the Center of the World, it's going to be a dig pile right there. If she says Chaos of Venom, it's going to be in these crystals that you're going to melee right there. If she says where the Mighty Titan points, you're going to follow this pathway that I do, past where we got the cage down, and it's going to be a meleeable pile there. And finally, the steps of flesh and bone is going to be a pile right here. Now that you've got a dormant hand, we can begin the hand upgrades and we'll start with the hand of Gaia. Gaia Shrine can be found in Spartan Monument. All you need to do is with a dormant hand, go up to the shrine to begin the initiation. You're going to be locked down in this section. And all you need to do is simply survive until the lockdown is over. I'm going to pop down my Pegasus Strike because it is getting a little bit messy here. And now this is over, you simply can pick up the Fallen Hand of Gaia, and there you go. But we're going to work on its upgrade. It's very, very easy to get it to the Redeemed Hands, and we're going to be going for three plants around the map that look like this. Simply shoot the three crystals on it. They're going to destroy to reveal a little seedling, which you pick up, and then you take it back to the Shrine. You can't sprint while you're doing this, or shoot, so you've got to be very careful when you do this in the round. But there we go, we just go ahead and plant the seeding like that. Next plant is going to be in Stoa of the Athenians, so we simply shoot the three crystals. There's the seedling, so we just pick that up and run it back to the shrine and interact. The final one is going to be Temple Terrace just behind the spawn. So again, just shoot the three crystals, get the seedling, pick it up, and we can take it back to the shrine. Once we're all planted, we shall get a vault portal appear, which if we prove ourselves to Gaia, will teleport us to a area out the map where we get given the Packer Punched version, the Redeemed Hand, and we have to use our new hand to kill a bunch of zombies. We get infinite ammo, which is really cool, and after you've done this, you've improved yourself, there'll be no more zombies spawning, and you can teleport back into the map. And as we can see... Gaia complete, pretty nice and easy. What we're going to do is we're going to put this hand back in and we're going to go and work on another upgrade. So she mentioned where the arrow splits the road. So as you can see right here, this is where the arrow splits the road and boom, we've got another dormant hand. Nice and simple. So there's no order in which you need to complete any of these, but we're going to work on getting the next one, which is going to be Oranos. So place our hand in to begin the initiation. And I'm going to go ahead and plant down Pegasus, because again, that was a bit too close for comfort. <laughs> and after getting a certain amount of time spent in here, we will be given the Gauntlet of Oranos. Now that we have the Gauntlet of Oranos, we can begin the upgrade. And we're going to need to bounce zombies' bodies off of wings. Of feathers, I should say. First feather we have is right there. So you just want to shoot the zombies so the body bounces off the feather. We didn't get it that time. Doing it in this round here is actually proving to be a little bit hectic. But if you need any additional guides or simplified tutorials on explaining this stuff, then I have all the links you'll ever need in this video's description. As we see, it shot a feather. So what you do is shoot the feather up in the air twice. And it should bring itself back to the shrine. And there we go, nice and simple. Our second feather location is on Cliff Ruins by this mystery box. So just have the zombies by this mystery box location, shoot up in the air, and boom, there you go. Now you do need to shoot the feather twice, otherwise this won't count. But luckily your shots do travel, so that should be all Gucci. As we heard the noise there, that was confirmed, the feather fell, so that's a good sign. And the last one is going to be by the other mystery box location. Just wait for a zombie to spawn over this cliff usually is your best bet. All that. Boom. There you go. Hit there. And Feather, where are you? There you go. One shot there. 
and another shot there and that should be it complete there we go we heard the noise and we should have a portal waiting for us so we can go and get ourselves the upgraded hand this will take you to wind's crest where again you're gonna have to prove yourself with infinite ammo it's pretty damn simple just spam this to your heart's content until you get teleported out that's the upgrade done nice and simple now we've got another dormant hand all we need to do is go to another shrine and we're gonna start with hermera Mera is situated right next to the amphitheater shrine right here so Place it in and we'll begin the initiation of Hemera. So just like before, we just need to survive in this until the circle is complete, where we will have Hemera. And there we have the fallen hand of Hemera. I've made a little bit of a boo-boo, and for this next upgrade, you need to have a weapon long range. So before I pick up the hand, I'm actually going to buy the KN57. Now you might be a bit confused on this, but I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. But for Hemera's upgrade, we need to shoot three shields out the map to align the right way. So we're going to start with the upper road. So we want the shield to look like that. Nice and simple. Here in Temple Terrace, we want the shield to face like that. And the Gymnasium Bathhouse to look like that. Once the shields are aligned like that, you can pick up the Fallen Hand of Hemera. If you didn't already buy Mog 12 earlier, then you can just pick up the Hemera and do this all as you would right within the same time. But there we go. You shoot that and it should go into that pot right there. Shooting this shield with the shot of Hemera should bounce the crystal into that pot right there. And if we shoot the shield here, the crystal should bounce into that pot. Now with these three pots, you want to melee the pot light so it now attaches to your fallen hand and you need to run as fast as you can back to the shrine. Now you don't need stamina, but it does greatly help with this step. So there we go. If you do it in time, you'll be able to melee the pots and it will work. But if not, then you'll just have to shoot the shield again to light up the pot and then melee and bring it back again. So let's melee this pot in Temple Terrace going to attach to our gauntlet and we have a certain amount of time to bring it back to the shrine before this light runs out and then the final one just melee it and bring it back to the shrine melee that pot and there we go we can now prove ourselves to Hemera. and this is very simple it's so again infinite ammo just rain down hell on everything we see and there we have it redeemed hand of Hemera. So we need to find one more dormant hand and then we can go ahead and craft the final one. And this dormant hand is going to be in the other area of the map because if I walk past the Oracle, she'll tell me to seek the primordial hand by the shrine of wind and sky. Let's go. There it is. Pick it up and we'll take it to our final, final god hand, which is the hand of Charon which is right beside the mystery box. So we'll place our fallen hand in and begin the initiation. So now that's done, we'll pick up the fallen hand of Charon. And in order to upgrade it, what we need to do is kill zombies in this fountain here, the river of sorrow. We need to be killing quite a few zombies in here until we get given a cool prompt. And uh oh, that's not what we want lads. So we're gonna keep killing until we get this prompt, hold to drink from the river of sorrow. Now I'm going to wait until we get near to the end of the round before I do this next step. And you should make sure that you get to a quiet part of the round before you drink from the river of sorrow. Okay, now we're at the end of the round. You simply want to drink from the river of sorrow. It's going to put you in a weird vision mode where you won't regenerate health. And we're going to be looking for three coins. Uh oh, that's not good. We've already lost. 50 of our health. So you're going to be looking for a coin which will pick up and say obtain. Oh man. At the moment, we're only getting false obols. We need to find a real one. There we go. Obtain an obol. That's exactly what we're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that guy out. But yeah, you can see these all around the map through the walls. And we're going to be searching for three prompts or three different coins which will say hold to obtain rather than hold to extinguish because we don't want to extinguish well we want to get rid of the fake ones we want to get the real ones so now that's our third one found with three of them all you do is take it back to the shrine of sharon and then we'll be able to go into the initiation so there we go all three coins placed and we can prove ourselves
And there we have it. That is all four gauntlets upgraded. Now, at this part, if you've done everything and followed it exactly as I have in this video by getting all four gauntlets and upgrading them, doing the challenges super early on in your game so that you have the eternal flame lit up, you can actually begin the Easter egg, your Easter egg ready to begin Ignite the Beacons. And if you want to see a full guide, I have that linked down below in this video's description. But with the eternal flame, you should be able to stab the fire and your spear should be lit on fire like this. Now what we want to do is we want to move on to upgrading the gauntlets a second time and to start that you need to have all your challenges done so you have the eternal flame, flame the spear and then simply throw it above this pot and it should light up that pot there. With that done we can now actually begin to do the second stage of the gauntlet upgrades. But you are also ready to start the Easter egg if this is a solo or co-op game. So we've jumped a few rounds now and I'm here in the center of the world because we're going to start to do the upgrade. So starting with the Oranos final upgrade, we need to kill a water catalyst zombie in front of the shrine. So I'm at the end of the round. I've got the water zombie right here. So I'll just shoot it. As you see, the soul goes into the shrine. And now all we need to do is get about five to ten zombie kills in front of the shrine and as you can see we finally managed to get it done nice and simple once it stops getting souls into that thing that's when we're done and you can tell your progress by looking above the pack-a-punch machine and seeing if the symbol has lit up above it in the color of the catalyst so our next one is going to be killing an electric catalyst at the Hemera Shrine in order to upgrade the Hemera Gauntlet again. So it's going to take the electric zombie. We've got a bunch of zombie kills there. And for this one, every time you get one of the 5 to 10 zombie kills required, you'll see the actual yellow soul of the zombie fly into the shrine. So I think we're done with that one. So we'll move on to the next one. For the Gaia Shrine, we need to kill a fire catalyst. So at the end of this round, I just got that kill very easily. And all we need now is to get between 5 and 10 kills so I used my Hemera Gauntlet and we got that one really easily. And for the Charon Shrine we need to kill a Poison Catalyst so as you see there it goes into the shrine and then you just need to get 5 to 10 zombie kills and once that is completed and your Pack-a-Punch has all four of its lights shining with the different colors of the Catalyst Zombies we can then take on each of the God's Trials the first being Gaia and this is the same as the Gaia upgrade step when you teleport it in except this time you have limited ammo and you're going to have a ton of catalyst zombies spawning in here so i definitely recommend you take in like a normal gun like i use my gauntlet for a bit here then i switch over to my mog 12. just as a side note in this ultimate guide if there's one particular gauntlet you want to upgrade all the way fully but don't really care about the others then you don't have to go ahead and get each specific catalyst kill say you wanted to just upgrade this one the gaia one all you need is to just kill the fire catalyst and then get get 10 zombie kills and then you'll be able to do this specific challenge to upgrade that one gauntlet but if you want to do all four then obviously you need to kill each catalyst and get the 10 zombie kill requirements so after completing Gaia's challenge the next one we get given is the hand of Oranos challenge which is going to spawn in like a ridiculous amount of skeletons now if you've got full ammo on this thing then you can just blast away with its charge ability like there's no tomorrow but without it this is actually super tricky i definitely recommend the pegasus strike because it makes this one a lot easier but as you can see right here the skeletons just don't stop spawning and it's ridiculous having the i guess the death hand as well the sharon hand would definitely also be useful because the skeletons would just melt as soon as they walk into the middle with a charge shot this definitely was quite a tricky one the next challenge is Hemera's challenge which is going to spawn about maybe four to six Six of these big guys and as you see with the blue gauntlet it does absolutely no damage so i definitely recommend you take in a mog 12 for this one or a fully upgraded special weapon level three as that will deal a lot of damage but it's not just these two that you've got to take down because then they just spawn in more so i definitely recommend you have a good strong weapon definitely pack a punch all the way like the mog 12 as it will be extremely useful against these big guys but once completed you can teleport one more time which will take us into Sharon's challenge and this is where we're gonna have Blight Fathers. Now this is where I definitely recommend the Mog 12 because 
This area is so tight that if a Blightfather hits you once, your half of your health's gone straight away. So you need to be super, super careful about your spacing in this one. But the Mog 12 just took them apart so quickly. And once you've done all the challenges, you'll notice that the lights on the Pack a Punch will have restored. And you can now Pack a Punch each Gauntlet for absolutely free by just placing it in the Pack a Punch machine. And it will upgrade your hands from the redeemed hands to the exalted hands. And once you've done this, again, you've got that upgrade for the rest of the game. It's so good. And if you want to get the rest of them, you simply just got to pick them up from their shrines and put them in the Pack a Punch machine. Now, this is my favorite section of this ultimate guide, the pro tips. If you've skipped through to this part, I don't blame you, but I hope you've watched and appreciated the guide up until now. But let's jump into my pro tips on how to get through this Easter egg as easily as possible. I explained right at the start of this video about the challenge system and how you want to light the eternal flame blue, which requires you getting one legendary tribute reward and then one epic. Breaking it down mathematically to light the eternal flame blue, each player in the game needs nine points. A common reward counts as 0.5, rare counts as two, legendary counts as four, and epic counts as six. So obviously, if you do a mix of legendary and epic, that will equal 10, which will get you the eternal flame blue. And for speed, legendary and then epic is the one you want to go for. If you're looking to get the eternal flame blue as early around as possible, you should only open one side of the map up towards the sentinel artifact and leave the rest of the map closed. That way, the oracle can only give you challenges that are relevant only to the playable space is open at that current moment. So, so if you only open the map on one side towards the amphitheater and keep the rest shut, the challenges that you'll be given should be pretty easy, such as killing zombies in the Temple of Apollo, holding a position on Upper Road. And if you want to get this as early around as possible, you should avoid any tributes that involve killing zombies. That way you're going to pass through rounds. But what should happen is on your first legendary, like I didn't get in this video, you should get a Pack-a-Punch weapon, which in this gameplay, I got the Galil Pack-a-Punch, which served me very well and helped me gain a ton of points early game. Now my next pro tip is involved with the step align the citizens and it's the final cog in the middle where all the statues are turning around and how it's very difficult for people to hit this. There's a very obvious split second moment that you have which is when the statues are all facing the crystal. Just simply throw it towards that back wall and you should get it like you see me do on my first attempt here. I've seen a lot of other people just spam it and hope that they hit it at the right moment but it's not involved hitting a cog at the right moment. It's simply throwing it when the statues are facing the crystal. As you see here, I'm now onto the step where I need the six armed boss zombie to shield bash this piece down. And the best way to get this to happen every time is if it hasn't spawned in during the round, you're gonna have to push to the next. But when he is there, you simply need to do some damage into his chest. It's a bit of a red blotchy area. And once you've put a little bit of damage into him, not enough to kill him, but enough in there, he should begin to do his shield bash attack which should launch it down. Now this next pro tip is going to save you so much frustration and it's the hardest step in my opinion on solo to do which is scepter and sundial and it's when you place the redeemed hand of Hemera into the raw statue that lockdown is super difficult on solo. But thanks to an amazing tactic found by Twitch streamer Blade LMAO I'm going to show you how you can get this done every single game without fail and you should complete this step 100% guaranteed so what you'll need to do for this is to start this step as normal by putting the redeemed hand of Hemera into Ra's hand. The moment you put that in, run away towards the Hemera shrine. What should happen is some zombies should be spawning towards you and in the Hemera shrine area and you just want to start training up the zombies. What you should notice is you'll have literally an entire horde of zombies as well as a blight father chasing you and you want to train around in this section and then using upper road or any other area that you want to just to train the zombies around until eventually you visit the shrine and the Hemera hand should be back there. But if you go back to the gymnasium bathhouse, you'll notice that the raw step is complete. The wall would have been burnt down. Not a single skeleton spawned in to block that beam and you can pick up the scepter of Ra, place it in his hand and you will have completed that step without killing a single zombie without any stress or worry about a skeleton blocking that beam. It's honestly god 
tier strategy. I'm sure this trick also works in co-op if all players just hang around the Hemera Shrine and have one player go and place the hand and run back, but definitely an amazing trick to use. Now this next pro tip is going to involve the hand of Gaia, and this is more for solo, but if you're playing up to three players, this trick also works. Now you do need to build all four gauntlets in a game for the Easter egg, and you need to upgrade three of them. But Gaia does not need to be upgraded whatsoever. The one step that involves the hand of Gaia does not need to be upgraded whatsoever, so you can absolutely just not bother to upgrade it. However, the upgrade is extremely easy, and if you want it, I guess it's there. If you're playing four players, you will have to upgrade the Gaia because you need all four upgraded anyway, but it's just a nice tip for Solo to cut some time. Another pro tip is the Leprechaun Easter Egg inside of the map. If you build the Pegasus Strike early on and have that throughout the game, but are working to get the three homunculus out the mystery box, save that box hit until you're going into the boss fight, because your Pegasus Strike will be taken away from you and replaced with Wraith fire which is not bad by any means but you do lose the pegasus strike so you might as well have some monkey bomb function by getting the homunculus now my last tip is quite an obvious one but you still might not be aware of it and it's during the boss fight and charging your specialist weapon back extremely quickly now the zombie warlord boss that's standing on the mound shoots fire at you but if you run through this fire it's going to recharge your special meter extremely quickly this is something that Treyarch put in because it's really really difficult to kill a load of zombies to charge your special meter back up but once you've gotten through a phase of pegasus all you need to do is run through two or three fire it will hurt you by 100 health but you'll regenerate it and it will make your special meter charge so quick that you'll have a special weapon ready to go again on pegasus and this also applies for the second phase of the boss fight when you're fighting against the zombie warlord he will also shoot fire at you again and even though his damage point is his shoulder and he can be hurt by normal weapons as well special weapons will always do the most damage to him so make sure you're shooting him in the shoulder when he appears into the arena and then once he's down use the special weapon on him shack rams level three is the best special weapon to use in this boss fight it hurts pegasus so much level three melee is extremely powerful compared to level two and you get that increased ability of using left trigger and right trigger to unleash the shack ram spin around you but i really hope you found this useful I've got videos on ultimate guides for the other Black Ops 4 Zombies maps. So you can check those out in the description. But if you enjoyed it, a like rating would be super awesome. And feel free to subscribe as well. But I appreciate you watching all the way through if you have. I really appreciate your time and I really appreciate the support on my ultimate guides. And I will have more out for the future DLC maps for Black Ops 4. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.